finite element analysis using SOLIDWORKS. And in this video, we will be talking about fatigue analysis. In specific, we will be performing a fatigue analysis on a S hook, which we normally find on chains. All right, so before we continue on with the video, let's just have a small discussion of all the content that we will be covering in this video. Uh, so the first one would be, we'll be talking about what is a fatigue analysis. And then we'll be talking about the different applications of fatigue analysis. After that, we will be discussing about the SN curve in fatigue analysis. And I'll also explain you what an endurance limit is. Then we'll just move on to the software part. We'll do a normal stress analysis of the S hook. And then we'll move on to do, and then we'll continue on to do a fatigue analysis of S hook. And then I'll explain you the difference between the four different types of fatigue analysis modules that are available in SOLIDWORKS. And at the end of this video, we will be giving you a brief explanation about the different results that you can obtain by running a fatigue analysis. Uh, so let's move on. So the first topic that we are discussing is what is a fatigue analysis? You see, fatigue analysis establishes whether your model is susceptible to fatigue damage when it is subjected to a fatigue load. But before we actually understand what fatigue analysis is, we need to be aware of two very important things. One is fatigue failure and the other one is fatigue damage. So what are fatigue damage and fatigue failure? When components are subjected to loads which vary with time, they tend to fail at stresses well beyond their ultimate yield strength. This is known as fatigue failure. So why does fatigue failure even occur? It is due to the formation of microscopic cracks in the surface of the material. As we continue our cyclic loads, the crack continues to increase in its size once it reaches a certain length, it leads to fracture. This is actually well visible in this model, which I've actually showed to you in this screen. So here you have a normal shaft, which has a load acting on both the directions. We have a small crack here, and at one point of time, it just experiences fracture. So how do we figure out whether a component will fail under fatigue? This is done by subjecting the model to a large number of constant amplitude cyclic loads and counting the number at which the fracture occurs. Uh, the test is then repeated to a large number of times with different applied stress values. We can plot the results into a graph, and this graph is called as the SN graph or the SN curve. The graph might actually seem a little bit overwhelming to many people in the beginning. Uh, it's not really that difficult, I'll just explain it here. So here we have the SN curve for brittle aluminum uh, with a certain grade, and you can see that in, in the y-axis, we have the stress in megapascals, and in the x-axis, we have the life cycles. So according to the graph, if the aluminum is subjected to 300 megapascals of stress, then the material will fail under fatigue stress with just 10 life cycles. The same way, if you subject it to around, say, 100 megapascals of stress, then the material will fail at around 10 to the power 6 that means that means around 1 million or 10 lakh life cycles. So using this curve, it allows us to calculate the number of cycles of load a material can experience before undergoing failure for a given range of stress. Fortunately, we don't need to perform the time-consuming tests yourself as the data for these materials is published in many material handbooks and also many code books, and you can actually get the data online. The next point we will be discussing about is the endurance limit. You see, for some materials, especially ferrous metals, the SN curve becomes flat for lower stress values. And uh, this is known as endurance limit. So what does this mean? Theoretically, the component or material can be cycled at this stress value for an infinite number of times and it will never undergo fatigue failure. So for this material, let's say here we have the SN curve for steel and here we have the SN curve for aluminium. We can notice that the SN curve of aluminium does not flat out, whereas the SN curve for steel starts to flat out at a stress value of around 30 KSI. So that means that 30 KSI of stress value, steel can theoretically endure almost infinite number of life cycles. And uh, this is called as endurance limit. Now that we've actually had a brief discussion on fatigue, failure, fatigue damage, and fatigue analysis, it is so important that you also know a few applications of fatigue analysis. One of the most prominent ones is in spinal implants. When people have a few spinal impairments, 
like scoliosis, what they do is they perform surgery on the spine and they place spinal implants. Spinal implants do is they provide support for our spine. So whenever the person is going to bend over, the spinal implant will, will also bend over. And one way to ensure that fatigue failure does not happen in the spinal implants is by running a fatigue analysis. Another important application, analysis of power transmitting shafts. The next common one is turbine blades. This is the area where majority of the fatigue will take place in turbine blades. We could go into the particulars about it, but we are really constrained by time. Another one is airplane wings. Uh, if anybody who has traveled in airplane or at least seen an airplane take off or land, you, you, can, you would have noticed that every single time an aircraft lands, the entire wing structure, this area just moves up and down. Because of that, the place where the air wings connect with the fuselage, this area, will actually undergo a lot of stress and also cyclic repeated stress. Because of that, fatigue can occur. Another one is athletic shoes. You, you would have noticed, right, every single time we buy a new shoe, for the first week or two, our shoe would feel like brand new. It will have this certain amount of resistance when we are walking. But as we continue to use the wear and tear, what happens the specific area in our shoe begins to wear out because you're moving your this is because of anatomy of our feet every single time we try to lift our foot up only this area lifts up and this place is going to stay firm on the ground because of this a lot of stress is being developed this specific area of our foot of our shoes so what these big brand big companies big shoe companies like adidas nike Reebok, what they do is they run a fatigue analysis and this is especially done for custom made shoes. So let's now move on to the software part of this course. Uh, let me quickly go into the SOLIDWORKS interface. All right, so I have opened SOLIDWORKS. I'll just quickly go over and give control O. So I've opened the S hook, it's a step file, so it'll just, the software will be reading the model. It will also be provided the model. If at all you want to do this for your own practice, it will be linked below. Okay, we have our S hook here. So what we will be doing is we will be fixing this area, this place, and this part of our hook. And we will be running a small stress analysis with a certain amount of force acting in this way. And then we will run a fatigue study to determine how many cycles this S hook can experience before it undergoes failure. If you're still wondering where do we find this hex, just if you have a chain or any old ornaments, you will be able to find the S hook. It's normally used to hold the two ends of our chain and it helps us to remove it and put it back. This is fairly straightforward. All right, let me just go go ahead and grab my SOLIDWORKS simulation license. Okay, so now that it has come, let's go ahead and press new study. So before we actually move on with the fatigue study, it is actually important that we perform a static study or even a dynamic linear study, non linear or non-linear study on this SO, because this is why we define the different parameters of our analysis. So I'll rename it as static hook and I'll click tick. We'll just continue to do the usual stuff for material. Let's go apply our material, apply our edit material. Since this is a part of a gold chain, the material that we will be applying is pure gold. So for that, let's go to other metals and scroll down to pure gold and hit apply. And the color of our material has changed. Close. Now we will be fixing our model. So the parts that we will be fixing are this curve, this bend, this end, and this cylinder because we will be applying a force from here. If we fix this one, we won't really get any results from this. Let's press OK. And the external load will be, we will be applying force of 
mm, let's assume 200 newtons okay let's run this directly run this study don't really need to mesh it because this is a very small model uh, we can use the automatic mesh here okay so the solver has seen excessive displacements so it's going to change the type of solving so it will be changing to large displacement model so let's press yes okay we have our results as you can see we have a one miss stress most amount of the stress is induced in this area of our hook and this is exactly what we needed with this data we can run a fatigue study all right let's go to a new fatigue study for that right click create new simulation study and we will be renaming it as fatigue hook and let's go and press fatigue as you can see once i press the fatigue simulation option we again further get four more different fatigue models so the first one is a constant amplitude fatigue analysis the second one is variable amplitude the third one is a harmonic fatigue study and the last one is a random vibration fatigue study so don't worry about all four of this i'll just explain them with the help of an example so let me just quickly go over and open my jam board all right so i have my jam board for the exam let's just take a normal cantilever as an example okay so let me just draw here so this side it is fixed and we have the cantilever beam over here okay. and we have a force of let's say n newtons acting in this direction load versus time graph so we load will be here as y direction this is n and the time will be t seconds in this direction so at zero seconds we don't have any load and at and we'll just mark it as uh, one, two, three, four, five. So each one of these are actually 10 seconds, all right? So at zero seconds, the amount of load that is acting on this cantilever beam is zero, okay? And at 10 seconds, what happens is we decide to give a load of N Newtons in this direction on this cantilever beam at this point. So what will the load be in this graph? It will be around here. And I'll just mark this as uh, just for the sake of reference, let's make this a small n. It will be small n, all right? And it will be acting downwards direction, so it will be a positive load. And again, at 20 seconds, the amount of load acting on the cantilever beam is removed. So at this instant, it will be zero. Let's mark it here. At 30 seconds, the amount of load that is acting on this cantilever beam will be n but here's a small problem we will be at here the load will be acting in the opposite direction to mark opposite direction i'll just change the color here it will be here acting in this direction ensure that it is this it's the same magnitude so it's smaller and that would be since this is acting in a different direction, we will be considering that as a negative load. And that is at 30 seconds here. Again, in the next another 10 seconds goes by and the amount of load that is acting will become zero. Now let's just plot all these graphs together. And now what happens is the same graph, the same pattern, it's followed again. So what happens is the graph will look somewhat like this. And this is what constant amplitude fatigue loads are. At certain set intervals of time, you have a certain fixed value of load, which is acting at a certain direction. 
with as the time progresses the load remains constant but the direction in which the load acts changes continuously with respect to time so the next one is the variable amplitude history data this we can explain by comparing it with constant amplitude uh, the only difference between a constant amplitude cycle and a variable amplitude is that here in constant amplitude the amount of load and the time interval everything is fixed but in variable amplitude just as the name suggests every single parameter here varies with respect to time so here you can see that at this specific time instant n value of load is acting in the downwards direction so we have a positive n value and according to the graph after a fixed interval of time the direction in which n is acting will be reversed but the magnitude will remain same but that is not the case with the variable amplitude fatigue test with time the direction and also the value of the acting load will keep on changing the next one is the harmonic fatigue study uh, the harmonic fatigue study is actually much similar to the constant amplitude study in harmonic study the loading and unloading will follow a sinusoidal graph let me just go to the work board so this is for a constant amplitude study the graph for harmonic study will be somewhat similar to this it will be a sine graph it means it will follow the curvature of most of you who have seen a sine graph or a cosine graph will be able to recognize this this is how a harmonic study will be so in a constant amplitude study at 10 seconds for this example we had n again at 30 seconds we had n but in the different direction so it was either an extreme value in a certain direction or an extreme value in, in the opposite direction but in a harmonic study you will be gradually increasing the load here so let's say from zero to the maximum value we're not just we're not going directly from zero to hundred we are approaching it and we are increasing the value of load gradually and again in the same way we're not decreasing the value immediately to zero we are reducing the value gradually and again changing the direction of the load gradually so that's the main difference between a harmonic study and the constant amplitude study and the last one is random vibrations uh, random vibrations this uh, this module is mostly used to run fatigue study for components which occur which experience a lot of vibrations uh, this is pretty self-explanatory so we will be performing a constant amplitude study in this i'll just go ahead and press ok okay so here we are in the fatigue analysis window uh, before we start let's just go check the properties here you can see the mean stress correction here you can choose between a uh, goodman model gerber model or the soderberg model uh, for now for this analysis we're not going to select any of these because uh, these are not required for such a simple analysis uh, we'll just press none and press ok mm. Uh, right click on the loading and let's add the event Here you can see that the static analysis that we have performed has already showed up here is not auto automatically selected You can see that there are four different types of uh, loading they are fully reversed zero based loading ratio fine cycle peaks so the first one is the fully reversed loading in fully reversed loading the load value is fully reversed for a set number of cycles so let's say we are having a thousand newtons of force of load which is acting in a certain direction and it is oscillating between a positive and the negative directions essentially what the software does here is that it changes the value of the load from positive side to negative for a single cycle and the analysis is run for a set number of cycles so in this case here we have set it as thousand so the uh, load will be oscillating be between a certain value let's say in this uh, static analysis we have set our load as 200 newtons so it will be 200 newtons for the first instant and again it will become plus 200 minus 200 and it will continue on till we hit the required number of cycles and the loading ratio for a fully reversed load is actually minus one the next one is the zero based 
uh, loading in zero based loading the load is varied between zero and the value of the load so in the previous one the fully reversed what happens is that so if our input load is around say 200 newtons as in our example then the load will be oscillating between 200 minus 200 up until we reach the like total number of cycles so here thus but in zero based what happens is that it will initially be 200 again it will come back to zero again you go back to 200 again it come back to zero so this will continue on till it reaches 1000 and this is also actually called as the on off load since we're uh, for one instant we are actually giving load and for another instant we are removing the load so which is effectively just offing the component so next one is actually loading ratio uh, loading ratio is nothing but a ratio between the maximum to the minimum load that the component will be experiencing so here in our example we're giving say 200 newtons of load and our loading ratio here which is given by default it is 0 0.5 that means that the load will be oscillating between 200 newtons to 100 newtons so now the maximum is 200 and 100 is actually 0 0.5 times of 200 so that means it is uh, the minimum load will be 100 and in the same way if your value is negative then it means that the direction is also different from the initial value so here 200 is our input value then if we have minus 0 0.5 then the minimum value would be minus 100 newtons and the last one is find cycle peaks uh, fine cycle peaks is based on multiple reference studies. Uh, the program uses the stress results of the specified studies to find cycle peaks that give the highest alternating stress for each mesh node. An example of this would be if you are evaluating a scenario where a dead load is present. So in short, what this does is it will run multiple studies to identify the highest peak of the alternating stress among the studies that are mentioned by the user. And for now, we're not using any of these. We will be using the fully reverse one. And let's press OK. Our next task of action would be to add fatigue data to our model. So let's go and press the model and right click, apply or edit fatigue data. Once we press this, we have the material dialog box. Here you can see that the, the SN data is actually empty so what we can do is we we just go ahead and press the derive from material elastic curve. initially it was fixed at defined that means the user will have to input the n and the s values manually uh, but we don't really want to do that we will just press on derive from material from material elastic modulus and the software will automatically generate one for us we can either select based on austenitic steel curve or carbon steel curve We'll select austenitic seal curves and press apply if at all you wish to actually look at the sn curve you have a small preview over here or you can press on the view option here and it will open up a separate tab for it where you can pan over and select and check all the values let's just close this one hit apply and close now we have everything set up. Let's go and run the simulation. We just press run the study. And all right, we have the results and the results are actually in two separate options the first one is the damage analysis result and the second one is for the life let's discuss about the damage so the input parameters for us were we gave a 200 newtons of force in this direction on this phase and you can notice that this area has been completely damaged this is from the legend from the legend we can see that uh, this color associates with 100% damage. That means this part has failed for the fatigue study that we ran and also the amount 
considering the amount of force that we gave. The next one is life. So in this option, we can actually check how many life cycles you can survive for. And uh, this bend has absolutely failed because here you can notice that the maximum number of life cycles this has survived is for 10 cycles. And after that, it has undergone fatigue damage or fatigue failure. So for 200 Newtons, 1000 cycles, this has hooked with cold material, will not survive. And that's what we have concluded from this analysis. And if you have a link to practice this on your own, we will be giving the model down below. You can, uh, you'll get a hyperlink to access the model. Uh, you'll get the step file. Your task, if at all you're willing to practice, would be to run a similar simulation, but with a much lesser amount of load. Uh, I gave 200 Newtons of load. You can give 50, 100, 75 Newtons of load, whichever, whichever load which you desire. And you can run this study and see how many cycles your S book can survive. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you've understood the concept. I'll meet you again in the next one. Bye.